In World War II, the largest battleship built was the Yamato. The largest warship built in Europe was the Bismarck. Germany was on the losing side in the First World War, and after defeat, the Treaty of Versailles was signed. The Treaty of Versailles contained severe provisions. The agreement prevented the Germans from building ships weighing more than 35,000 tons. When the government changed in Germany, banned work in many military fields started again. England was an enemy, and its navy was one of the largest in the world. Then crazy projects were presented to the government. Two invincible battleships were to be built. One was the battleship Tirpitz, and the other the battleship Bismarck. With these ships and boats, the entire Atlantic would be under control. Thus, England, an island country, would be cut off from the outside world. On November 16, 1935, the construction of the Bismarck began. The ship was launched with a great ceremony on February 14, 1939. She was 251 meters long and 36 meters wide to protect Bismarck and Tirpitz from enemy attack. The Norwegian fjords were seen as the most suitable place. In fact, Iceland was the best place for Bismarck to land in the Atlantic. But England, knowing the value of Iceland, had already taken action and signed treaties with Iceland. From 1939, German U-boats poured in. Reinforcements coming to Britain from the United States had done considerable damage. But with the decryption of Enigma, the German top-secret encryption device, the British were now able to locate the U-boats. Convoys were also now using new tactics against the U-boats. And there were no longer as many casualties as at the beginning of the war. When Bismarck anchored in the Norwegian fjords, the Allies began searching for Bismarck and reconnaissance planes spotted her. Allied bombers were ineffective in the area where the Bismarck was anchored because Bismarck was between two mountains. In addition, there was a very irregular airflow in the area and the range of the planes was insufficient. By the beginning of 1941, the Bismarck had made up for all its shortcomings. Towards the end of May, reconnaissance planes reported that Bismarck had left Bergen. Bismarck's task was to attack large convoys and together with the U-boats to dominate the Atlantic. For this purpose, Bismarck was accompanied by the heavy cruiser Prince Eugen. The aim of the British fleet was to attack the American fleet. This was to prevent the Bismarck from entering the open zone of merchant ships, the ships Bismarck and Prince Eugen. On May 24, 1941, they encountered British patrol vessels. As a result of the British fire, the Bismarck ship returned a devastating and harsh response. Prince of Wales' ship receives heavy damage as a result of open fire and escapes to avoid sinking. He had reported Bismarck's coordinates to his base while fleeing. Hood was not as lucky as Prince of Wales. Shells fired from the Bismarck soon sank the Hood. Hood was the largest British flagship. The sinking of the Hood caused great sadness among the British people. When the British Hood was easily sunk, the crew of the Bismarck, he was beginning to feel confident in the ship's strength. But the Bismarck was damaged in two places in this battle. One of the damages on the Bismarck was in the fuel tank. This part of the fuel tank had to be emptied at sea. The other damage was near the nose of the ship but she needed to refuel for the Atlantic missions. The fuel level was low. Bismarck had two options for refueling. The first was the port of Bergen in Norway, where they had set out from. The second alternative was the port of Saint-Nazaire in France. By choosing the first one, they would have to go back the way they came and lose time, or they could have decamped to Bergen by the shorter route between Scapa Flow and Iceland. However, British warships were shooting javelins in this area, if his location is detected, he may be subjected to an intense attack. Admiral Lutjens found the second supply point more logical, because they would be able to sail across the Atlantic soon after resupplying from the port of Saint-Nazaire. Also, in secrecy, this route seemed better. However, Admiral Lutjens did not know that he was inside an extensive radar network. The ships HMS Suffolk and Norfolk followed the Bismarck ship from a distance while the Prince of Wales ship joined these ships. The British ordered their fleet, which was waiting in the south and included an aircraft carrier, to come north. There were three ships in the fleet. They were heading towards the coordinates of the Bismarck's advance. Although the location of the Bismarck has been determined, there was a distance of 530 kilometers between the fleet and Bismarck. He noticed the ships following Admiral Lutyens. The Bismarck ship would make a sharp maneuver and pull all three ships towards itself. The Eugen ship was to leave the area. Eugen would hunt down merchant ships and return to Saint-Nazaire. Likewise,
Bismarck would sink these ships and proceed to Saint-Nazaire comfortably, aircraft carrier Victoria in the British fleet. It was close to where Bismarck was located. Most importantly, the Bismarck had come within range of the torpedo planes. But the planes that inexperienced pilots fly instead of Bismarck, he began to attack towards the Norfolk ship that was in pursuit. When the guns fired from the Bismarck, the pilots realized they were heading for the wrong ship and launched an attack on the Bismarck. A large number of torpedoes from aircraft were sent to Bismarck. The Bismarck ship had not been able to shoot down any of these aircraft. One of the torpedoes fired from the planes had hit the Bismarck. This torpedo hit the middle part, where the armor is thickest, and did not damage the ship. As the Bismarck continues on its way, the British ships are in pursuit. He was moving slowly. The distance between them was widening because the British knew there were submarines in the area. When Admiral Lutyen saw that he was separated by the following ships, he made a 270-degree maneuver. He started to go to France behind the British ships. Thus, the Germans had lost radar contact with Bismarck. But Admiral Lutyens did not know this. It was also necessary for British ships to buy fuel. Thus, the British had missed a great opportunity that they had. Although the British could not determine the exact location of Bismarck, they had narrowed down the forecast area. But if German planes got involved quickly, the British ships had no chance. Moreover, three ships of the Britannians also had to leave the fleet because they were running out of fuel. Of the Britons, five. The battleships King George and Rodney were a long way from Bismarck. Soon after, they located Bismarck. Upon the developments, ships were called from the Gibraltar region. A large fleet was on its way, along with the Arc Royale aircraft carrier. The fleet had advanced as far as the French coast. The torpedo planes from Arc Royal had taken off immediately. With the first plane to take off from Arc Royal, they again thought the British ship was Bismarck and dropped the torpedoes. A torpedo had accidentally hit the Sheffield light cruiser, but the torpedo did not explode by chance. When the second wave of aircraft took off, classic type torpedoes were installed on the aircraft. The fleet found the Bismarck this time, and two of the fired torpedoes hit the Bismarck. One of the torpedoes exploded in the middle of the hull and did not cause much damage. The second torpedo had struck the stern of the ship. As a result of the explosion, the ship's two rudders were locked. The pier that gave the main direction to the ship remained locked in the rudder rotation position, so Bismarck couldn't go forward. He was constantly making a circular turning motion, but there was no malfunction in the weapon system. Bismarck's massive weapon systems were still keeping British ships at bay. In the morning, Admiral Tobin's ships had reached Bismarck, Rodney and Fifth. The King George ships began to bombard Bismarck together. There were also counterattacks coming from the Bismarck ship, but since the ship was constantly rotating, accurate shots could not be made. Realizing this, the British ships continued to fire, edging closer to the Bismarck. For about an hour and a half, the Bismarck was subjected to intense fire from four British ships. A huge fire broke out on her deck. Of course, he also refused to sink on such a large ship, but now Bismarck was completely defenseless. When Admiral Toby saw that there was no longer any resistance from Bismarck Bismarck on May 27, 1941, it was starting to sink around 11 o'clock. The ship was blown up by the ship's crew so that it would not fall into the hands of the British. After this incident, instead of building warships, the Germans they thought it would make more sense to build submarines. The Bismarck was thought to have been designed as an unsinkable ship. The war adventure of the gigantic warship lasted only eight days.